How's everyone doing? Welcome to episode two. Um, first, I want to say thank you so much to uh, something that I didn't really expect to happen on episode one. I didn't expect so many producers and so many engineers and so many studio pages to share episode number one. Um, this first bunch of episodes of the podcast is geared towards independent artists and how to grow your career. You know, in independent musicians, I'm going to talk about some different things like how to become a session player and, uh, you know, what to do if you actually want to move to Nashville. And like there's there's a few, a bunch of different topics, but they're all kind of revolving around uh, artists and musicians. And I didn't expect the number of uh, producers and engineers and studios to get behind this. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, your guys' interaction with this whole thing is is what helps me to do it. Uh, it helps it get in front of people and it helps it be successful. And so thank you. Um, I'm more than considerably more than doubled my my number of YouTube subscribers just from episode number one, and that's crazy to me. So uh, thank you again. Um, so let's get all this out of the way first. Uh, if you want to be notified of when episodes drop, head over to my YouTube channel. You can just search for Colt Caparoon, and I promise I'll be the only one that pulls up. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, hit the subscribe and make sure you hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe. So that way you're notified of when all future episodes come out. Um, and, uh, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, that would be wonderful. It's just at Colt Caparoon. I'm constantly dropping hints on, uh, little tips and tricks on my Insta story and, uh, pictures of cool gear and studios and whatnot. And if you'd like to follow me on Facebook, it's just just search for Colt Caparoon, and I will be the only one that comes up. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much. Oh, and it, obviously, I'm a producer. I'm a mix engineer. I'm a session guitarist. I do some mastering. If you're interested in any of that, hit up coltcaparoon.com, and you can listen to all kinds of examples of my work. You can listen to before and afters of songs that I've produced and mixed. Um, yeah. Let's stop talking about me, and let's talk about you. <laughs> um, okay, episode number two. The topics for these first few episodes are, are sourced around, you know, the most asked questions I get from clients um, and in my socials on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, episode number one was talking about how to get a manager and how to get a booking agent. And today I wanted to discuss whether you should drop a single an EP or an album. And that is a, something that I get asked constantly. Um, the music industry is changing pretty quick. And to a lot of people, it doesn't seem to make sense yet because it, you know, not very long ago, you just released albums and, and you put them out on CD. And then you started being able to put them out on iTunes. And then you start, you know, and then streaming started becoming a thing. And and all of this stuff is changing pretty quickly. And uh, I think we're just in such a, a new place, even though we're five years in or so, we're in such a new place that it's not super obvious to people what they should do with this sort of stuff. So should you release a single or an EP or an album? And I want to try to unpack this conversation and break it down because it's the, there is no one answer. There's absolutely not one answer. It's different for every single person and where you're at in your career and most importantly, what you want it to accomplish. Um, so just like in episode one, how I was talking about trying to get you in the mindset to be valuable to people. Um, most everything I talk about or that I will talk about in these first handful of episodes is going to revolve around trying to get you in the right mindset, how to look at your situation. So that way it, it's more obvious the, the right moves that you should make. Um, I, I think that that's the most important thing. I think if you can truly be uh, 
honest with yourself and with where you're at in your career and your current situation and where you're trying to go, if you can, if you can truly nail those things down in an honest and transparent way, the path becomes much clearer. So just like in episode one and episode two, I want to like make sure that that you're approaching this stuff with purpose and know, you should know exactly what it is that you want to accomplish. And every move that you make in your career, excuse me, should be in an effort to help you accomplish the thing that you're trying to accomplish. I see so many people uh, just, which is kind of why I think I'm going to do a so you want to move to Nashville episode because I see so many people just show up and it's not limited to Nashville. It's, lim- it's everywhere across the, the U.S. But I see so many people just show up and they think that just because they're here or just because they happen to be putting music out on Spotify or, or Apple Music, that stuff will start to happen for them. And that's not that's absolutely not the case. Just because you're putting out music and just because you're in a geographical location does not mean anything. Anything is going to happen for you. You have to be deliberate about what you do. So um, some of the things that help, I'm going to go through, what I want to do is I'm going to go through a bunch of different reasons or scenarios why you might just do a single or why you might just do an EP or why you might just do an album. And then hopefully throughout this, you'll have a better understanding of why you should do each um, or why you shouldn't do a particular one, and then you'll know better how to proceed for yourself. Um, <clears throat> so, what, <clears throat> excuse me, let me take a sip of my, my first sponsor, Pepsi, here. If anyone works for Pepsi, I've been pimping your products for a long time. I would, I would love an endorsement. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Different genres. I think that a good place to start this conversation is different genres. Um, There are some genres that are very much album-driven. Whether they will stay that way or not is is a a little bit deeper conversation that we're going to get into. Um, But like if you like hard rock and metal are still, especially metal, they're still very album-driven genres. I would probably put bluegrass in that category. I would probably put any sort of classical based, orchestral based music in that category. Generally, the people, the consumers that are into this kind of music are are into works of art, not just a song. Um, So I think those are still very album driven. Um, I think that um, rock and indie and indie pop and pop rock, you're starting to get back into the EP territory where it's probably most common for people to do EPs. Um, And you see some singles in that, but like, you know, there's a lot of rock and a lot of indie rock where people are dropping EPs. And then when you, we really, the more commercial you go, excuse me, the more commercial you go, the more likely it is that you're going to do a single. Uh, And that's usually what you see from people, from other artists, is the more commercial their music, the more mainstream their music, the more likely it is that they're going to do a single. And so you start getting into, um, you know, pop and R&B and hip-hop and pop country and pretty much all the country genres, because country as a whole, at least in the mainstream, is becoming more pop centric in the in the terms that it's it's more based around popular music, and it, it's headed the direction of um, mainstream music. Love it or hate it, it's an entirely different conversation. So, um, that's kind of where I like I. It starts there for me. This conversation starts there. What genre are you in? What subgenre are you in? And then the other thing that really plays a big part into it is where you're at in your career, and what you want it to a- accomplish for you. Are you an A lister, <clears throat> like you know, Keith Urban or Carrie Underwood, or 
uh, you know, post Malone or or Five Finger Death Punch. I'm trying to think of all the different genres. You know, if if you're an A lister, um, or even a, a an A or B level, even down to a C level, it's really common to do full albums because you've already created a level of success. You're already in a place that. Um, you know, the the rest of what we're about to talk about, like cost to benefit and what it costs to market and what it costs to release and what you want it to accomplish, like all of these things, the higher you go in your career, the less these the rest of these things have an effect on you to an extent. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, where you're at in your career plays a pretty big part a pretty big role in this conversation for me when I'm, when I'm coaching artists, when I'm working with artists that I'm producing or when I'm developing somebody, um, these questions play a pretty big role in that whole conversation. Uh, so where you're at in your career instantly is what do you want it to accomplish for you? You're releasing music. Well, why are you releasing music? Well, at the core, most of us are just, we do music because it's who we are. It's it's what we feel that we're meant to do. But <clears throat> after that, you, ha you have to, if you want to make a living at this, and again, I said this in episode one, and I will say this in every episode, everything that I'm saying is in an effort to get you in the headspace and point you in the direction to make a living off of your music. We're talking about the music business. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a hobbyist. I don't think there's anything wrong with not wanting to make music money off of your music. If that's where you are, fine. No, no issues whatsoever. Hopefully you can still get something out of this. But all of my advice and all of my coaching is all directed towards how do we get you from wherever you are to making a living off of your music. And so with that in mind, what is it that you want to accomplish by releasing this piece of music? Do you want, you know, at the very lowest level, <clears throat> you are a brand new artist and you've never released any music before. Um, a lot of people in that situation have a hard time getting into co-writes with more successful writers, writers that, that write better songs. They have a hard time getting shows uh, original based only shows, it's almost impossible to get um, on any sort of tour or on any sort of opening slot for any nationally touring artists, which is one of the things that I think everyone should focus on. Um, all of this stuff is, is really almost impossible if you've never released music before. So if it's your first release, it's very uh, likely that you should be looking at your first release as the beginning of your career. You, you can't ever get anywhere. You can't make any progress at all until you start. You can't really start gaining fans if you have no music out, original music out. Um, you can't really start getting into fantastic co-writes if, you if you're not being viewed as an artist worth writing for. So you have to you know, have music out for that. You can't get on a show specifically talking about bigger shows, opening slots for nationally touring artists. You know, you, you can go play the, the local venue down the street. I'm sure you can get a show there without having music released. But if you want to play serious shows, you have to have music out because the promoter is not even going to consider booking you if you don't have some music out. Um, is your goal to, to climb up radio charts? Is your goal, are you, maybe you're just a recording artist and your goal is to, is to put something out there and get on Billboard? Or, you know, there's a whole bunch of different uh, reasons why you would want to record music and produce music and, and release music. And I think knowing what to do down to who your producer is and how you're going to release and all and how many songs you're going to release, single EP or album, this is all, it, it, it really goes a long way to know what you're trying to accomplish is, is the point. So know where you're trying to go. Know what you're trying to accomplish with your release and with your career. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of people, the most often people that I get this question from are newer artists who have not released anything or who have released very few things, a few singles or, or a few EPs. And they would like to know which direction to go. 
So, you know, I think the next thing to consider is why the industry seems to be moving towards EPs and and at the farthest extreme into singles. Um, there's a whole bunch of th- reasons why that is. One, obviously, is streaming. We're in this place where you don't have to go into Best Buy or Sam Goody and buy the whole CD anymore because you liked the song on the radio. Now you have the option of buying one song, which that is almost going away. Apple already released that they're killing iTunes. They announced that they're killing iTunes. So we're, we're very, very close to you not even being able to purchase music anymore except for directly from the artist at shows, Um, which is another topic that I think is probably a good one to discuss as far as, you know, your merch and how, uh, you know, selling physical, physical copies of your music at your shows. But anyway, um, you know, we're very close to not being able to even buy music anymore. Uh, And so the it's not necessary to do an album anymore. Love it or hate it. Doesn't matter what your opinion is on that and and whether you hate the fact that we're moving this way or you're embracing it fully. It is the way that things are moving. And and none of us, not me, not you, we're not going to stop it. That's the way things are moving. So um, I always I always think it's – this is a little side note. I always think it's important to recognize what the game is. Again, love or hate it doesn't matter. Uh, you need to recognize what the game is and then figure out how to win. And people that are holding on to prior things, things of the past that you have no control over bringing in, uh, it's, not a, it's not a winning strategy for sure. Now, we are seeing the resurgence of vinyl, which is very cool. I love that we're getting back to a physical thing. But again, that only works for some genres. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I could go down these rabbit holes forever. Um, this is why my coffee meetings end up lasting three hours is because I don't shut up. <laughs> um, okay, so, the you know, it's not necessary to release uh, an entire album, 10 songs, 12 songs, um, because back in the day, people wouldn't buy a CD necessarily with one song on it. The single they heard on the radio, they love that single, they want that single, but they wouldn't pay what it costs to physically make and distribute a CD for one song. So it was necessary to put out multiple songs on an album so that way people would buy the album, the CD, the cassette, whatever. Um, and and it, it was worth it to them. They got the song that they really loved that they heard on the radio, and then they got a whole bunch of other songs that they've never heard, and then that justified paying, you know, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen dollars for a CD. But now we don't need that anymore. Now you don't need uh, twelve songs to get someone to listen to your music. And so what it really when you boil this all down, I'm gonna jump way ahead here because this is already getting long winded. If you really boil all of that down, what you get to is the concept of cost to benefit ratio. The most successful albums in all of history still didn't have every song on the album as a single. And so you get to this place where like, okay, so you want to release 10 songs. How many of those have earning potential, money making potential? And again, this is just a mindset I'm trying to get you in. I'm not trying to say that you, if you really want to record an album and release an album and you have the financial ability to do so, do it. That's awesome. I'm not, it's, I'm not suggesting anyone shouldn't record an album or they shouldn't record an EP. What I'm saying is this is how the industry works and this is how why things are moving the way that they're moving. And so let's say you've got a 10 song album, you've got 10 songs written, how many of those have real earning potential, real single potential? How many of those songs could potentially be played on the radio? And for most artists, for most people, you're you're lucky to have one, if we're being real honest, you're lucky to have one song out of your 10 song album that came from a pool of 50 songs that uh, has real radio potential. And so then what you see is, you know, because we're streaming now, because album sales aren't aren't really a thing anymore, you're seeing artists make much, much, much less money off of their recorded art than they used to previously. 
And so what happens is you've got one song out of 10. Maybe you've got two and you're lucky. If you're just, if it's a smash album, just an absolute smash that's going to blow up the charts, you've got four, maybe five singles on your album. But that's like, that's literally like winning the lottery. Um, and so you've got one song out of 10 that has earning potential. But it costs, let's say, I think you all remember episode one where I talk about my ease of math. Let's say that it costs you $1,000 to produce a song. Now, at in the professional level, that is kind of the bottom of the range. If you can find a, a legitimate producer and legitimate session players um, to produce a r truly radio ready, a song that truly stands up to everything else, um, $1,000 is extremely cheap if you can pull that off. So, but we're going to use $1,000 because I'm not good at math. I actually am good at math, but it's so much easier to just spitball this. So you've got one song that has earning potential, but you want to release 10 songs. Well, that 10 song album costs you $10,000. Now in all reality, it's probably going to cost you $15,000 or $20,000 to do a very serious 10 song album. And we're talking just production. We're not talking artwork and photos and marketing and all that stuff, which, which this is a, an in-depth topic to unpack. Um, so you've got one song, but you, so you're spending $10,000 and you're only going to recoup any of that investment off of one of the songs because one of the songs is a smash and, and, you know, there's a few songs that are okay. And the rest of them are kind of filler songs, which if we're being completely honest and remember when I was talking about being really honest with yourself and where you're at, um, if we're being really honest, that's where most artists are at. Most artists who drop a 10 song album have one or maybe two good songs and then there's a few decent songs above average songs and then there's a few like filler songs that are kind of just there to get to that 10 song or that 12 song mark um so you've only got one song that has earning potential but you spent all this money on all these songs that don't really have earning potential and remember now we're streaming so if people don't really care for song number eight on your album, they're just literally not going to listen to it. And so you're going to make nothing from it. Um, and, you know, so that that is part of the reason why now you're looking at, you're getting in the mindset of being efficient with your finances. Because at the end of the day, you're running a business. You have to be efficient with your finances. Well, you can't possibly make a living at this, um, which is a whole nother video that I'd like to do, a whole nother episode that I'd like to do about how to keep your overhead low, how to, how to make sure that you're not spending more than you make and all that. Anyway, um, so then you get into what other costs are involved in, in pushing your releases, you know, your, your music videos and your, your cost of marketing. I see so many artists just put music out, whether it's a single EP or an album, they just put music out. Now it's on Spotify and iTunes and they'll make a few social media posts and that's kind of where it stops. Um, you, you need to have a release plan for your music because if you just spend all that time writing your songs, all that time with your producer pre-production, all that time and money producing your songs out, and then they just kind of flop out there in the public's eye and you just hope someone finds it, they won't. People won't. People almost never just find music. It has to be placed in front of them. So you need to have a real release plan, and a lot of times that costs money. Um <clears throat> also, we're, we're starting to get into a very video-driven world. Music videos are, are almost becoming a necessity. This goes back to where you are in your career and what you want from your music. If you just need music out there so you can get into better co-writes because no one knows what you do, you don't need a music video. If you want music out there to get on bigger shows, you probably should do a music video because consumers are drawn, especially if it's a good music video, which it should be. You should absolutely have a great music video if you're going to do it. There's no point in half-assing this. There's no point in half-assing anything. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to do a music video, well, how many singles are you saying that you have? If you have a 10-song album, are you going to try to push all 10 songs? Probably not. You couldn't possibly make it 
uh, most people couldn't possibly make a music video for all 10 songs on their album. They're just going to make a music video for whatever they think are the most marketable songs or whatever songs they personally like the most. And so you add that cost into the, the whole deal. So now you're looking at at least a couple thousand dollars at the very minimum. And most music videos that are $2,000 aren't worth anything anyway. You really kind of need to hit like the $5,000 mark before you start getting something that's worthy of being on CMT or, or some music network. Um, and so now you're talking about like how many videos are you going to do if you're doing a 10 song album? Well, you're probably only going to do one or two. So you're continuing to double down on the fact that you are pushing only a couple songs while you've paid to produce all the rest of these songs. And, and this just kind of continues on down the rabbit hole. You know, your release, you should have a marketing budget. Um, again, depending on what you want, if you're just trying to get into better co-writes, no, you just need music out there. So that way, you know, you can show that to people. And so people are like, oh, they have, you know, they're, they're an artist, they're releasing music. Um, at the same time, the more successful you are as an artist, the better co-writes you can get into. And so th this is why there's no real right or wrong answer to any of this, but hopefully this is helping unpack why you should do what. Um, the cost of marketing your releases, whether it's Google ads, um, social media ads, paying to get on playlists, paying a radio promoter, doing a, a radio tour. You know, there's a whole bunch of different things that that cost real money uh, to push the release of a song. And um, again, you're not going to put that money behind 10 songs. So this is kind of why things are moving towards an EP and a single driven market. Um, let's, so mu music videos, let's talk about music videos for a little bit more. Uh, you really... Well, one of my favorite things to see people do is to use parts of their music video to help push the release of a single. Um, I think it's one of the most effective ways to get people's attention. Um, and, and so since I think that that's one of the most effective ways, I think it's important to have a music video for a song that you're really trying to push. Um, and again, I, I think it, I've said this before, and this, this is not, I kind of don't even love that I have this opinion because once upon a time I was nothing and once upon a time I was nowhere and, and hadn't had any success and hadn't charted on different charts. But if you really, so I feel bad saying this because I, I, I'm not trying to diss uh, unsuccessful people in the industry or people who have yet to have success. But if you really want to make a, a hard go at your, at your music career, I think it's important to use people who have already done big things. And I say this all the time to my clients on social media. It's important to, because you as a, you as an artist, and this is no diss on you as an artist, you as an artist, you, you're not a videographer. You're not a filmmaker. You're also not a producer. Um, you're also not a photographer. And so the chances of you being able to objectively look at what a photographer or a filmmaker or a producer is doing for you and actually know whether it stands up to everything else on TV and on the radio, it's not your world. There's no possible way that you, that you could accurately know that. So for your own peace of mind to know that you're not wasting money, I think it's important to use people who have already done successful things. You use people who, one, you like what they've already done, and two, uh, they have already had some success in the same world, in the same field of what you're trying to do. And that way you have peace of mind. If you use a filmmaker who has already had stuff on, I guess MTV is not a thing anymore. Uh, I was going to say MTV. Uh, MTV or CMT or whatever. If you've, or, you know, you've already had, you're using a filmmaker that has a, a video that's got a couple million views on YouTube, well, then you know he's capable of doing the work, he or she, is capable of doing the work that can command that sort of attention. Um, so I think that that's important. But I do think that music videos are a really great way to help you release. But again, you're not going to do them for everyone. So um, I think this has gone on just about long enough.
single, EP, or album? I'd love it if you guys would drop in the comments and let me know what you think, your thoughts on this whole thing. Um, I think if you're a beginning artist that uh, needs there needs to get music out to take you somewhere, to help you accomplish things that you can't really accomplish until you release music. I think it depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to get on that national, that opening slot for a nationally touring artist, and you're trying to get promoters to place you in these opening slots, or you're trying to get on legs of tours, or you're trying to get on the tour, you're going to have to fill somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes um, on stage. And so you really need that much music released in order to have a shot at doing that. Um, you really need at least an EP, at the very least, like a five song EP before you can have a shot at going after those opening slots. Um, and so if that's your goal, and if you're trying to go on the road, and if you're trying to make it as an artist, uh, especially as an artist with a band who's playing live shows as a primary source of promotion and income, um, my suggestion is to do an EP, especially if you have good songs. If you're not there yet, if you're not at the place where you're really ready to go after those shows, you don't have a band yet, you don't have all your players yet, maybe you really don't have five songs that you truly believe in, which is super common, then I think it's important to, once you've decided you're going to be an artist and this is a career path that you're going to take, it's important to just move. It's important to just one foot in front of the other. And every single day you should make some progress towards that, whether it's on your social media is growing your following, whether it's writing songs yourself or getting into co-writes, scheduling shows at local clubs so that way you can get um, some on-stage experience. Every single day you should be making some progress towards whatever it is that you're trying to do. But if you're truly new <clears throat> and you truly don't have, you're truly not ready to go open, you know, for a, a Parmalee or a Breaking Benjamin or, you know, someone like that, if you're truly not there yet, then I think singles are a great way to go. Um, there's nothing wrong with releasing singles. It allows you to put all of your focus and all of your energy and all of your financial ability into one song, into producing one song, making sure it's the best that it can be, getting the best video you can possibly afford for that one song, putting as much money as you can into marketing of that one song. And you're actually saving money. If you only have one song that you truly believe in, but you recorded 10 at a thousand bucks a piece, Instead of record, instead of paying ten thousand dollars for your album, you've paid one thousand dollars for a single. And again, these numbers are figurative, so you've saved nine thousand dollars, and that is a substantial investment that you can then put into music videos and marketing and playlisting and even a radio. Uh, promoter, you can uh, with nine thousand dollars, you should be able to get all of that done for one song. And so, and I'm not saying it's the biggest thing. It's not going to be the most massive video production, music video production. It's not going to be an A-list radio promoter. You're not going to beat people over the head with your social media ads and your Google ad placements. But you can, with nine thousand dollars left over because you didn't record that album, you can have you can really get through all of that stuff and make a pretty good entrance for yourself. Um, if you are not concerned about the financial side of things, uh, if you have uh, a backer, I'm trying to think of how to say this respectfully because I obviously don't respect people who have help. I really don't. Um, I don't disrespect people. Did I say I don't respect? I don't know what I'm saying. This is new to me. This podcasting thing is new to me. I'm figuring this out as I go. Um, you know, if, if you have, uh, parents that are willing to flip the bill for you or family that's willing to flip the bill for you, if you have an investor who is not all that concerned about like payment arrangements, getting paid back and you're not paying a massive amount of interest, um, if you yourself are independently wealthy, or if you yourself have worked for a long time to save up money because you really want to do an album, or if, 
an album is really what you think you need to do to get across your art. Because that is a conversation. I'm not going to dig into that. But there there are artists, and again, like we talked about genres, there are those things where it's worth doing an album to really get across the whole big picture. Um, and so, you know, maybe that's you. And so maybe the right move is to do a full-length album. Uh, you know, if again, if you're in the metal genre, that's pretty much an album-driven genre. Um, I, some hard, hard rock is album driven still, I think, you know, I think bluegrass is pretty album driven. Orchestral stuff is pretty album driven. There are reasons to do albums. The other reason that might help you decide is if you're going to sell your music at your merch stand at live shows, um, you, you have to have, in my opinion, just like it used to be for CDs, uh, and, and why we used to see a full albums, uh, so that way it was worth people buying. It's really hard for you to just put out a single and try to convince people to buy a CD or a thumb drive at your show that just has one song on it. Because at the very cheapest, it costs a dollar, a dollar fifty to make a CD per copy. And so you've got to charge two fifty, three dollars to make any money at it at all. And it's pretty hard to convince people to pay three bucks for one song on a CD. If you're doing the thumb drive thing, which is kind of a cool approach that I've seen some people do. If you're doing the thumb drive thing, the little USB drive thing, I mean, you're paying two or three bucks for one of those. Um, so you got to charge five, you know, and, and who's going to pay five dollars for one song at your show? And so that's another consideration. Now, which chances are if you're at those shows and you're selling your merch, you're probably already in the place where, you know, you already have enough music out to have gotten on the show. But it's definitely a consideration where you have to make it worth it to people to purchase your music in a physical medium um, at your shows. And so usually that looks like you need at least a five song EP uh, and an album is better. Um, you know, you can you can pretty easily sell a five song CD at your shows still for five bucks, six bucks. That's pretty, it's pretty easy to pull off. Um, and a full length album, you can charge 10, 12, $15 at your show and, and you can, you can pull that off. And so all of these things compiled together, where you're at in your career, what you want it to accomplish, um, the cost to benefit ratio of what it is that you're trying to do, how much money you currently have to spend on a total release on your music video and marketing and production and photos and artwork and all of the things, how much money you have to spend on all of that is really, you have to take all of this into account. And it's, it's honestly one of my favorite things when I'm developing people, or even if I'm not formally developing an artist, uh, a lot of my artists get a lot of this sort of coaching and a lot of this sort of input uh, and we'll look at their specific situation and what is the best move for them. And I love that. I think it's awesome. It's like a game. It's like playing chess. And um, once you get good at it, at, at seeing what you want to accomplish and the moves that you are best off taking to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish, it's really fun. And it's really fun for me to see artists succeed at that. Um, Drop a comment wherever you're watching. Drop a comment and let me know what you think. Um, I'd love it if you shared this with your friends, if you have friends that would get something out of it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else, I would be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, keep in touch with all of these episodes. Eventually, like I said in episode one, this is the first uh, handful of episodes in my new podcast, which once I get through this mini series is going to turn into a interview style podcast where I'm going to have songwriters and artist managers and producers and all kinds of people, gear makers from within the industry. Uh, and we're just going to have a conversation and it's going to be awesome. It's my favorite style of podcast to listen to. And, um, I'm really stoked to, make a stab at it myself. So I would, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell uh, icon to turn on your notifications and feel free to uh, follow me on Instagram at Cole Caparoon and at Cole Caparoon on Facebook and www.coltcaparoon on uh, 
the internet. <laughs> I'm a little tired today. And Pepsi. Come on, Pepsi. Hold on. Oh, this, the logo's not even that great. Hold on. Let's go this way. There we go. Come on, Pepsi. Pretty please. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support and all your interaction. And uh, I'm having a blast doing these things. And I hope it, I really hope it helps someone. I really do. That's, that's the only reason I'm doing it is I want to help people. Have a killer rest of your week and make sure that you make progress every single day towards your goal. Whatever your goal is, know what your goal is. And every single morning when you wake up, what is it that you're going to do to get you one step closer to your goal. That's how you get there. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.